Hello, 8th graders. This lesson deals with infinitive phrases and then a review of the verbals chapter. So first, infinitive phrases begin with an infinitive and then an infinitive phrase will be followed by modifiers. Could be a one word modifier, could be a prepositional phrase, could be both. Okay. Here are a couple of examples. To study thoroughly is my plan. To study, of course, is your infinitive. And thoroughly is the adverb describing to study. So the whole infinitive phrase, to study thoroughly, is the subject of your sentence. What is my plan to study thoroughly? S-L-V-P-N. Okay. And then one more example with an infinitive phrase. One study method is... To prepare as a group. To prepare is the infinitive. To prepare how as a group uh, tells you more about the to prepare. To prepare as a group is your entire infinitive phrase and the whole phrase functions as your predicate noun. Method is the subject. Is is the linking verb. Method equals or is to prepare as a group. All right, um, remember infinitives, we're going to talk about this more in a minute, can function as nouns, as both of these do. They can also function as adjectives or adverbs. All right, so a quick review. Participles, uh, we have two types, present participles end in ing, past participles end in d, e, d, t, e, n, etc. All participles act as adjectives, describing nouns or pronouns. Gerunds. Gerunds always end in ing. All gerunds function as nouns, and the diff five different types of nouns that gerunds can function as are as follows. Subject, direct object, indirect object, predicate noun, or object of preposition. And finally, infinitives. Always begin with the word to. You could have to go or to ride, for example. Uh, to plus a verb, as a reminder, equals an infinitive, as in to go and to ride, like we just went over. To plus a noun equals a prepositional phrase. All right, so if, if you have to followed by a noun, you do not have an infinitive. Rather, you have a prepositional phrase. Infinitives, uh, finally, can act as three different parts of speech. We talked about this in class, that it is, as long as you recognize the difference between an infinitive and a prepositional phrase, infinitives are perhaps easier to mark and label um, than gerunds or participles, because present participles and gerunds both end in ing. So then you have to decipher, even if you recognize the ing word, you have to decipher whether it is a... Um, participle acting like an adjective or a noun, uh, which would be a gerund, which would name. Infinitives are two plus a verb. There's nothing else that looks like an infinitive. But here's the, the last part here that I was talking about. Infinitives can act like three different parts of speech. So once you've found your infinitive, then you have your difficult part. Um, is that infinitive following a noun or pronoun? directly and describing it, therefore it's an adjective. If not, is the infinitive following a verb, an adjective, or another adverb? If it is following a verb, adjective, or another adverb, is it describing that word? If it is, then it is functioning as an adverb. However, if your infinitive does not describe anything, regardless of if it follows a verb, adjective, or adverb, it is then naming, and it may be um, a predicate noun, it may be a direct object, it could be an indirect object, it could be an object of preposition, or if the infinitive or infinitive phrase actually begins your sentence, then it is likely functioning as the subject of your sentence, of course, as a noun. Alrighty, we will check your reviews tomorrow. Make sure after you do 915 and 917, not 916. After doing 915 and 917, you also need to complete the chapter review in the back of the book. Um, 
as the instructions on the page say, do not um, send in your chapter review, only your vocab exercises and your two grammar exercises on LMS, and then keep your chapter review and we will check it tomorrow before the test. Have a blessed day.